Hey folks, uh, welcome to the podcast. I finally managed to podcast on CrossFit, which is awesome today. I had my coach Spud in from CrossFit Tufnell Park and uh, really interesting uh, life story. He started out in the army and started in CrossFit in Afghanistan and we talked about his life and transition from army life to civilian life and into into CrossFit and the world of uh, personal training and, and health and fitness and really tried to demystify a little bit about what CrossFit is and how we can all lead healthier and better lives. So really interesting and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Boom, and we're live. Hello. Spud, we made it, man. We did. We threatened, and we finally did it. This is the dream. I'm sorry about last time, but... No, no worries. Here. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I like this place. Thank and you. And I've finally got to see the artwork and the flesh as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's this guy called Italian guy called Hunto, mm. who was like a graffiti artist in Italy, and then became legal and became a street artist, okay. and does some cool stuff. Yeah, well, I've seen it. I've seen it. Every time you pop the, the picture up on Instagram, I'm... I, I want to get in front of it. So. Yeah, I've got a claim to fame. I'm trying to be consistent with the photo. <laughs> yeah, I do love that one. Um, cool. So, what is your background? Uh, my background: I'm a fitness professional. I guess you could call me. Uh, I'm head coach at CrossFit Tufnell Park, and I sort of found fitness a long time ago. Just before I joined the army, I had to get fit to join the army. So this was what when you were 16 or um, 18. So I joined when I was 19. Okay. So yeah. I made the decision at 18 and I wanted to sort of change my lifestyle. And um, I didn't have very much going on at home. Uh, I was working in a bar and it was a little bit dead end. So I didn't, I wanted a bit of progression. And yeah. The town yeah. that I came from wasn't, it wouldn't push me as far as I needed to go. So my brother went to join the army and failed. So it's kind of a bit of a, well, he's failed. So I'm going to try and do it just yeah, so yeah. I can say that I, I passed it. And then I passed it and through being in the parachute regiment I had to maintain a good level of fitness nice found CrossFit on my first tour of Afghan in Afghan you were yeah, doing yeah it? in Afghanistan yeah so right. we were working with the Canadians and they had a, like, an, a, like a CrossFit affiliate already this was 2007 cool in Afghanistan yeah CrossFit, oh, wow. CrossFit Kandahar wow and they were cool. working out there and we went and did a workout and then from then I was like I need to do this every day started coaching some of the blokes when we were in Afghan and when we came back to the UK left the army eventually and went into fitness got my PT qualifications yeah but it was postnatal PT so all my clients were like young mums oh, right, or cool. prenatal so getting ready to sort of give birth and then recover and, and yeah. keep working out so how long were you in the army for uh five years almost six Fine. yeah I mean you can go one or two ways out of the parachute regiments it's either fitness or some sort of close protection work oh okay and I didn't yeah. fancy that Fair enough. I didn't want to sit on a boat in the Indian Ocean for months on end looking after no. somebody. I fancied interaction. I liked yeah, walking yeah. and I enjoyed coaching. And yeah. I went into fitness and it was a big hill to get up to try in, and establish yourself in the fitness industry. Oh, okay. hard work. You can't yeah. just walk in and have 100 clients. You have to show that you're good at stuff. You have to show that you've you, you, you kind of got to prove yourself to your local client base. On Instagram? Um, oh, well, this was, before Insta- this was <laughs> yeah. like pre-Instagram. So, like, I I started really coaching people in, like, 2000, like, professionally coaching people in like 2010. Okay. And getting paid for it. I was coaching before that in the army, but 2010 was really the first time that I was getting paid to do it and starting PT and people. And it's just word of mouth. You do a good job, they tell the friends, the friends come in for a session. Yeah, yeah. And it just sort of spreads that way. Uh, until eventually I opened my own gym. Nice. Got affiliated to CrossFit, did all my CrossFit Level 1 and Amazing. whatever I needed to do to, to get affiliated, opened up my business partner. We did that, which was more... And where was this? In, uh, Stoke-on-Trent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, up in the north, the bleak north. Up north. Um, so we did that, uh, it went really well. And then we wanted to go a separate ways. He had different ideas to me and we just sort of split it off and shut the, the gym down, which was a shame, but it kind of needed to happen. Yeah, yeah. And How long have you done it for? Uh, the gym was open for about three years. Amazing. So it did really well. We did really well. How did you find it from kind of coming out of the army to setting up your own business and... Strange, I guess. But the army sort of gives you that resilience. It doesn't give you much as far as like tangible skills. You don't come out as like a top business person. But what you do come out with is the ability to just go, okay, I want to do this. 
I'm going to do what I need to. I need to research it and study it and, and make sure that I can do it well. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to do a, a poor job of it. So um, that definitely helped. Just having a really solid mindset. If you were to, if you were setting yourself up for it, you had to follow it through. Definitely. And we did that. He was ex-military as well, so that helped. Amazing. We were on the, the same lines. And did you do any like? Do they, do they give you any kind of training for after for life after the army while you're in the army? Well, they or was they, it like they funded my PT course. Oh, like perfect. a resettlement yeah. so you can you can sort of go they say you've got X amount of money you can go and do a resettlement course some people go and use it for maybe like a business yeah, course business or whatever whatever you want to do um, so I chose fitness the PT courses aren't cheap so it's yeah. good for me to get that and just sort of put me on the pathway then that I needed to be on and then it's just continued personal development nice always just trying to learn more if you think you know enough you probably don't true so, why um, why CrossFit? Just because I I enjoyed doing it, and I saw the difference that it made for me, not physically but mentally as well. So if there was times where I wasn't feeling great and I was just in a bit of a rut, I would grab my kit and I would go to do some CrossFit, whether that was on my own or with a couple of pals, or eventually in an affiliate or even in my own gym. Yeah, it was always the same. You'd always got these guys that you could high five at the end of a workout, and you write something stupid on the board that you know is going to hurt. Yeah, and you just yeah. get through it anyway. It doesn't yeah. matter. You set the timer, you turn the music up. It's the best RE day. And that sort of sets you up for the rest of the day then. And yeah. you can do that every day. True. You know, to, to some extent. And what is CrossFit? Constantly varied high intensity functional movement across broad time and modal domains. So you sh- it's essentially trying to, uh, trying to move the way that you did when you were two years old up nice. until you're 110. Cool. You, you biomechanics quite- should function the same forever. But yeah. you have to look after them. We get screwed by sitting. Yeah, sitting by down and bad shoes. Looking down at a phone. Yeah. and yeah, poor footwear <laughs> yeah. and just bad life choices. Nutrition. We're probably chronically dehydrated, and we're living in a zombie-like state because we don't get enough sleep. Yeah, but that's just the All way of the that. world is now. So if even if you can just spend that one hour trying to alter something for the better, that for me was what CrossFit was about. And do you know what? It's it's different for everybody. True. Some people are True. like it's a place where I can go and get sweaty for an hour. It's a place where I can go and get shouted at by the coach. It's a place where I can chat with my mates and we can go and get a drink. True. But it's got a bit of a bad rep, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Why is that? Because there's so many affiliates. There's so many affiliates. Oh, well, do, doing globally, it slightly. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, there must be 20,000 plus CrossFit gyms worldwide. Everybody gets taught the same methodology, but you take that and you use that how you want to. Right, okay. And realistically... CrossFit is, I always say that CrossFit is for anybody, but it's not for everybody. So if you come into the CrossFit gym yeah. and you enjoy the fact that I'm just like, shut up, listen to me, do the thing, move better, get to the end of the workout, you've applied really high intensity, you're on your back and you're just like, I'm completely exhausted, you love that. I, you I'm, give me yeah. a high five, yeah. you take a sip of your water, you feel great, you go and tell your friends about it. Yeah. People will come in and that is their worst nightmare. <laughs> That's just absolute nightmare material. Me, six foot three and 15 stone saying, shut up and do as you're told. Straight away, they're like, oh my God, <laughs> this is not for me. This is not, but it's, it's funny. not fluffy. It's not nice. It's, it's very effective and very efficient. Yeah. But it's, some people just don't like the fact but that for it's me, a little bit rough. I do, obviously I do, uh, you're my coach and I do your CrossFit. It's great. Yeah. But for me, the great thing is I can just turn up. You tell me what to do. Yeah. I work as hard as I can. I sweat. I, speak, I have a nice like relationship with people there. Yeah. Got no idea what they do outside of CrossFit gym. Yeah. Just that the, this guy can do it quicker than me, and I'm yeah. gonna try and beat him next time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I go home. But my wife, who's uh, who you know, yeah, um, who's a women's health physio. Yes. All of her physio mates were like, "Don't do CrossFit. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it causes loads of injuries. Mm. It's really bad, and all this kind of stuff." And then eventually she started, and she's yeah. like, "Actually, it's nothing like no, what it's people not say." Scary. Uh, do you know what the so realistically in the world of the physio I can see why they would look at CrossFit the way that they do their client base are probably injured injured people you go yeah, to a physio yeah. because you have an issue and if people go and say I did this at CrossFit I did this at CrossFit then their their scope is CrossFit is bad but then do they look at rugby the same you get rugby players going in you'll get football players you'll get tennis players you'll get skiers you'll get swimmers everybody the human body is not as resilient as we think it is and you're going to get an injury whatever you do true that's true realistically for me as on the on the scale of crossfit you have gyms where you can go in and 
get sweaty. The coaching isn't at the top of the agenda for the business. It's just get as many people in the room as you can, do a big workout, go away, get the next slot in. Which for some people that's perfect. They don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. yeah. There's no real programming. It's just do a workout. There's no focus or there's nothing conscious about it, which some people love. There's some, which realistically is how I would like to run the gym, is coaching focused. You're here to be better at stuff. If you're moving poorly, if you have something that's stopping you from sleeping at night, if you're in pain, then we'll help you change that so that you can do this forever. And that's why CrossFit gets a bad rep. Because even within CrossFit, some people will go to our gym and go, oh, they just talk too much and there's too much coaching. They wouldn't just let me crack on. They didn't let me go heavy with the workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, you can't go heavy because you can't move it well enough. Yeah, yeah. Where you get other people going, I went to this place and no one coached me. There was no one talking. So it's it's like art, I guess. Some I remember, people like, love a piece of art, but some people look at it and go, that's not for me. Yeah, no, it's true. <clears throat> I think when I first came, when I first started CrossFit, which is a, a different CrossFit gym, um, you know, it was like deadlifts, rock up and put the weights on. I think you know, within two minutes, I was just doing a plastic bar. Yeah, it t- it's taken me like years to get the technique because it's kind of like, you know, for people that don't do it, it's like gymnastics, yeah. weightlifting, yeah. and then a high intensity body movements, right? Yeah, a kind of a mixture of all those things. Yeah, it takes a while to learn the like the technical weightlifting movements. Yeah, and but even the things. simple weightlifting movements, just a deadlift. Yeah, is, no, is we we run an elements class three times a week where you know, new people who've never experienced CrossFit before can come in and we show them how to squat and how to deadlift, how to press weight overhead. And people struggle with it. If you've never been shown this thing before, yeah. picking something safely up off the ground is an issue. So we can guide them and like you say, if you have a PVC pipe and you're moving properly with it, then we can sort of slowly upgrade you. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I no think. true. You know, For me also, because it's, it's Mental Health Week this week, mm. I typically I find when I'm doing exercise and I, t- I try and do like I say th- I do about three to four days yeah. like three in CrossFit I do a yoga session yeah. try and play one day a week of football yeah. um, I'm a much better version of myself yes like my endorphins are going yeah. and when I'm in when I'm in CrossFit or doing something physical like running or something I just I never think about anything else no it's just I've got to pick up this weight again I don't want to yeah. or I've got to get, pick up this ball and throw it against the wall yeah. and, I, and nothing else in my life comes into my mind at that yeah. moment yeah and then so you're completely focused completely it's yeah. like meditative immersed or, yeah yeah it's weird and that's do you know what I, I, I've never met anybody that doesn't feel that way about it and that's why I love it yeah it's because even you know I've been doing it uh, 12 well 13 years this year and I still feel the same when I'm doing I don't work out the same as I did when I was 19 I just can't yeah I'm yeah. 32 this year I'm not as... 32? I thought you were my age. No. (laughs) Thanks for that, mate. Uh, (laughs) um, Yeah, I'm not as resilient as I was. You know, you're more injury prone the older that you get. And I think it's just being aware of how your body functions and and what's good for you and what's bad for you. No, it's true. So I still train hard. I'm still getting stronger. I'm still getting fitter. But I just have to do it at a slower pace. Yeah. And for the people that don't do anything Mm. but want to, Mm. is it right for them or do they need... Yeah. Yeah, people have this conception that the, uh, I mean, it's a misconception that you have to be fit to do CrossFit. We have like 68 year old members who can't step up on a box. So you have to step them up onto a plate. And we can scale everything down ultimately to almost minimal movement. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't matter who you are or what your level of fitness is. You can come into a community where people don't care if you're fat or thin or anything else. It's just you're there, you're part of that class. You're still going to get the same high five at the end. Yeah. And you may not speak to any of these people outside of the gym, but in that place, you're like a little crew. It's like a gang. And you all do the same thing. You all hate the coach because he's making you do this stupid stuff. And at the end of it, you all feel great because that chemical release in the brain is just going, Ooh, we need to do this all the time. Yeah. And high intensity is relative. It's what you apply to it. True. Everybody feels the same at the end of the workout. Me and you could do a workout. You'll finish it in nine minutes. I might finish it in eight. We'll still feel the same. The 68-year-old member will feel the same as the CrossFit Games champion doing the same workout. They'll just do a very different workout. Yeah, no, it's true. They'll finish it in three minutes. They'll finish it in 12. But that's high intensity. Yeah. You go as quickly as you can. Yeah. And if you want to try and compete with other members, that's up to you. Yeah, that's but true. it's really just about, like you say, finding the best version of yourself. Yeah. How? What advice would you give to someone who's who wants to get into exercise or movement? Most of my mates, and I'm 37 still. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot kind of 
have let themselves go, let's say, mm. or they find any excuse they can. Yes. You know, I've got kids now, I'm married, I've got kids, I'm yeah, working yeah, too yeah. hard, but there's yeah. 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And you can always find, I mean, actually, these, a lot of these workouts are only at 15 minutes or yes. 12 minutes. Or, yeah, it's not, it's not a vast amount of time. Yeah. But it, I don't, for me, I don't think it's the time. I've, I've known a lot of people who are in the same position. And it's people going, I can't find time. You just won't find it. It doesn't exist. You have to make it. You have to make that hour. That hour, that hour is my hour. And realistically, mentally, it's a massive hurdle to, to sort of take yourself out of whatever you're doing. You're getting from work. What you want to do is kick your shoes off, sit on the sofa, get a beer out of the fridge and watch TV. Yeah, That's so easy. And believe me, there's days where I just do that. But the big mental hurdle of getting of going into a space that it's not the most comfortable. Most CrossFit gyms are big open spaces with rubber flooring, big steel rigs up against the wall so you can do pull-ups and then just barbells everywhere yeah. and a load of people dressed in brightly coloured no clothing. No nice showers with nice smelling towels. Yeah, no, there's the none of that stuff. The toilet. Yeah, none of that stuff. It's It smells like rubber. It's <laughs> yeah. loud. The, the music's up. Everybody's vibrant and happy. That is a daunting experience. Yeah. So my advice would be just take a deep breath, walk into your closest CrossFit gym and just say, I want to give it a try. Yeah. You won't get hurt on your first one. I mean, ideally, you can spend your whole life doing this sport and never get hurt. Yeah. I've I've been injured once, and that was when I was Olympic lifting and my elbow gave up. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. I just and I there's nothing you can do for that. No. It was a no. cartilage issue in my elbow, and it just couldn't handle the weight that was overhead. Yeah. But as far as like you hear people going, oh, I hurt my back doing CrossFit, or I've hurt my legs, or like I hurt my knee doing CrossFit. If you're conscious of the way that you move, you should never get injured. So if you can just take a deep breath, walk into the gym and say, I want to give it a try. And then at least you know then if it is for you or not. Yeah, that's Like true. I said before, it's for uh, anybody, but it's not for everybody. Yeah, so at least yeah. try it. Yeah. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of fitness places that have sprung up. Yeah. You know, like the cycle places, yeah. barriers, and all these kind of different things. Yeah. It feels like people are starting to get a bit more into it. But obesity and diabetes is still the biggest drain on still massive. Yeah. Yeah, still massive. No, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say like as far as the NHS is concerned, it's just an epidemic generally. Yeah. Food, uh poor food is cheaper to buy than good food. True. Yeah. So uh people with less money are more inclined to spend the money that they have on poor quality food, which doesn't help the health. No. Right. Um, but people are willing to go down the pub and spend what well, hundred quid on yeah, a round. Yeah, and yeah. and you know people, and you always hear it as well. Like another excuse is it's expensive to join a gym. It's expensive to do CrossFit. It's expensive. Yeah. To, yeah. But you know, hundreds to hundred and twenty or f- yeah. whatever it might be, yeah. right? Hundred yeah. to hundred and fifty, let's say, yeah. a month in London. That's in London. In London. London. In London. In London is. Are you going to have to spend on your health at some point? You yes. might as well do it up front. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on how you how you where you put your health on the scale of things. Yeah, yeah. Some people will put their uh, sort of short term happiness above the help uh, health, like drinking. Yeah, going for a smoke. It makes them feel good for ten minutes when they go on the lunch break, or at the end of the day they can just get a beer out the fridge or get the bottle of wine out. They feel yeah. good momentarily. Yeah, and that's that's pushing them further away from long-term physical health and you don't have to be it's not like a cult you don't have to be like super involved in it you don't have to go to every event but do something and i'll never knock other gyms i'll never knock other fitness modalities if you can go and work out and start to get healthier because of that just go and do it yeah and no, keep definitely. doing it and just keep doing it because you're going to get to a point where you're probably 50 or 60 or 70 years old and you'll start to panic because you've you've set these bad um, mechanics in place your whole life and it's going to it's going to have an effect yeah what do you think is a good kind of healthy balance and exercise good program nutrition it's quite a daunting it is. thing it's like google it and yeah. it's, it's so many different things yeah how do you just kick off and just i mean you kind of know as an as a functioning adult what you should and shouldn't be eating if you think I should go and eat a pizza for dinner every night, I mean, that's we need to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. But most adults know not to smash a pizza every day, not to drink 10 pints every night. They know yeah. that smoking's probably bad for them. I'm not just going to go and buy hog and dars and just sort of start smashing ice cream every day. But what I'm saying is you don't have to eat broccoli soup on a daily basis to be in good shape. Yeah. If you want to be a, an a really high-level athlete, then we can soup, dial in a, a nutrition plan. But realistically... 
eat less sugar, drink less alcohol, make more conscious choices about the food that you put in your body and do something active. Even yeah. if you do a few air squats at home or a little bit of yoga to a YouTube video on your own TV, start the ball rolling with doing something physically that you don't normally do. And yeah. that, that could sort of pave the way for healthier choices further it's, down It's the a line. start, do you think, like diet over activity? Diet should be the, the base of anything. Good diet should be the base of anything. So if you think of things in like a, like a pyramid, the base of that pyramid should always be what you eat. Okay. Absolutely nutrition. Yeah. If you're... If you think, no, I need to train six days a week and I can still eat what I want, the pyramid turns upside down and then it's it's probably going to topple over at some point. Yeah, yeah. Either that or the pals that you train with who are eating properly are going to surpass you very quickly. Yeah. And you're going to stay in that same place. You're not going to get any stronger. You're not really going to get any fitter. Your t-shirts aren't, you know, you're not going to get any slimmer. You're not, your aesthetics aren't going to improve because you're still putting that same rubbish in your body. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, diet is is probably the first thing I would change. But as you mentioned, it's quite expensive to eat healthy yeah. for some reason. Yeah. It's also quite hard to eat healthy because yeah. you can go down to Tesco yeah. and then you I mean, you have no idea what's half in half of these things. Yeah. Someone told me the other day that if it's got a food label on it, it's probably not healthy. No, yeah. yeah. You know, so so I, vegetables, meat, fish, yeah. great. I mean, this is another great part about London. You don't have to go to Tesco's and Sainsbury's to get your food. There's so many like independent fresh fruit and veg places most street corners you'll find like a market that's true that you can that's go true. to to pick up all the fresh fruit and veg that you need you can go to a fishmonger's you can go to a meat place and it's not going in and just buying all of the food make a little plan for yourself monday we're gonna have chicken and veg tuesday we can have steak and chips but you know that you've made the chips yourself and, and the steak, can't is, be bothered, steak is high quality so that's it <laughs> that's can't thing. be bothered or yeah. they don't they, oh, i can't find time to cook for myself make it yeah, no, you're right. And that it all goes back to where am I putting my health on the scale of things? Am I putting it below easy food at the end of the day and grabbing a quick beer, just having one cigarette on my lunch break, and then your health is in fourth place? True. Where do you put it? And you have to make that choice. It's a really, really conscious effort to do that, but yeah. you have to do it. Have you uh, have you experimented with any of the like pre-made meal plans? Yeah, there's quite a lot of companies that have popped up that. Yeah, I used one for a little while actually, and it works very well. But that's a very expensive way of doing things. Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Because you got most people can't be asked. But that's the problem. They want it. It's not that they they don't have time. It's just that they can't be bothered to make the time. Yeah. They want to get in from work and, and chill out. Yeah. But me personally, I love cooking. I really enjoy cooking. So my working day, I normally start work around six a.m. to coach the class, the first class day at six thirty. Do a couple of hours coaching, I then have PTs for maybe three or four hours in the morning. I'll get a little bit of time in the afternoon. Um, I'm about 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 to embark on a master's awesome. degree in strength and conditioning, so oh, I'm currently reading and writing for that to get ready for that. I then go back to work and do an evening shift, finish at 9 p.m. I then go home and cook. Nice. We cook dinner, and we'll stand and we'll cook dinner together every it's night. A, yeah, it's an experience. We don't. It's not just like sit down and slob out. Yeah. What are we eating today? And we enjoy like getting the ingredients together and seasoning things and testing things out. Yeah, yeah. Cooking food from different parts of the world, and you know we, we're quite experimental with what we nice. like to eat. And you and you do some meat. You're not vegetarian, or no? I'm not vegetarian. Yeah, it's just meat, fish, yeah. vegetables. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, that's it. And it, you know that it's 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 good food because you've been to the the local place to buy fruit and veg. It's not coming out of a packet. Yeah. Because we, we're also conscious about the amount of plastic that we get through. Yeah. We like true. to try and avoid plastics. So if it comes out of a packet, not only is I have no idea what is in the food, but I've also added to the plastic issue that is currently True. happening. And and do you um do you experiment with like supplements, protein and like um, all this kind of stuff or I have done in the past to see what works better. I've taken like creatine and blah 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 blah, like pre workout. BCAAs. Yeah, and- I mean I I take a bit of protein pre workout and post workout. Just to give me that extra kick, of uh, just just to help recovery. Okay. I take a little bit of um, casein protein at the end of the day, because it's slow release and it sort of goes back into your system as you yeah. sleep. Yeah. But realistically, that's it. So you should be able to get enough from if just you eating eat normally. good food. Yeah. If you put in protein in your system, chicken and fish, and yeah. you know, there's there's vegan alternatives as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if you if you know what you're putting into your body. You don't need to take a billion supplements. But again, it's about what you want to get from it. Yeah, true. If you want to be a little bit, look, looking a little bit better naked, 
Which is everybody's goal. Everyone wants Everybody to wants to look back at yeah. better naked. If you want to look better naked, just stop eating crap and do a bit of physical activity three times a week. So to, to, to lose weight, eat better, get on yeah. the exercise. Yeah, just yeah. stop. You eat the same. Just stop eating the bad stuff. Don't put sugar in your body. Don't put alcohol in your body. Do something physically active three times a week and you're yeah. probably going to see a difference quite yeah, quickly. Yeah. Give yourself a month of doing that and you will see a difference. Yeah. What do you think of all the diet stuff? Because it's like, you see people go on a diet and mm. then they get off it and then they put the weight back on. Yeah. And then they're like yo-yoing. Yeah. I mean, it, for me, that is, people are always going to experiment with, with what diet works best. And I'm not, on a, I'm not on a diet. I just don't eat crap. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, some Fridays we will go out and we will drink beers and we will order pizza. But that's not every day. You know, it's consciously every day I'm eating something that I know isn't going to bloat me out and make me feel crap the next day. Yeah, yeah. It's that momentary thing. If you're trying to find something that makes you feel good in the, that five minutes, it's probably not going to feel good for the next 24 hours. True. If you know you've eaten a good dinner, you're going to wake up thinking, yeah, yeah, I made a good choice last night. I'm going to have a glass of water and go for a run. But that mouth pleasure of a oh, nice pizza and yeah. a good chocolate. Don't get me wrong. So tempting. I love that stuff. <laughs> I've, I've got a sweet tooth. And I like eating burgers, and I will always drink a beer if you give me the opportunity. So it is, it's more of a mental hurdle. Yeah. It's yeah. not its not physical, it's mental. Just You've got to it, know it that. And... Yeah, it's good balance, but you need to know that through the week, you don't need to go and have a pizza. You don't need to have a beer. Yeah. If you're going to go out for dinner, then fine, but you probably wouldn't go out for dinner every night. No, no. The one thing really, I've got, is, well, I, I've got two kids. Yeah. And when I had my first kid, then it really got me thinking about what I eat because I want to try and teach my kids yeah. to be healthy. Yes. So they see me going to CrossFit. Yeah. They see me going for a run. Yeah. Um, we kind of bang. And I've on seen the- them in the gym cheering you on. When yeah, you yeah, work yeah. Out as well. It's great. Yeah. And I'm not doing very well. They're like, God, God. <laughs> they don't care though. At that moment in time, you're the hero. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. the hero. <laughs> yeah. I know that you're dead last in the workout, <laughs> yes. but that doesn't matter. No one cares. Does, no one cares. <laughs> no one else cares. You don't probably don't care. You just want to get to the end without dying. Yeah. But you, you could see you in this place moving. Yeah. And it's not. It's that's that's normal. And it's not about giving kids this is what healthy is. It's giving kids this is what normal is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Your normal. Your normality is. You're going to move often. You're going to eat good, and that's normal. So they know if they're eating a pizza, it's like, whoa, we're having a treat. This is a big deal. Yeah. It's treat day because we're having a pizza. Hundred percent. So I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, but I see so many don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the child obesity thing is really bad, and, yes. and it's so easy just to, you know, give it, be a good be a good example for your kids. Yes. And others, and yeah, it's also yeah. very easy to not be a good example. Like we said before, yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 easy to sort of slip off, and it's easy to buy the cheap food because it's just easy, and that's it. I think for me, if you want to achieve anything it's not just fitness physically if you want to achieve anything that's worth achieving it's probably not probably not going to be easy true do you do any kids uh crossfit stuff so i used to run uh we did crossfit kids when i ran my own gym and i used to run uh and a football team for under six year olds oh nice so we we would train like twice a week and then we'd play a football match every sunday and it was really good to see these young kids develop into like mini football players but really it was they were they became a little family and nice. they were all getting stronger and fitter and eventually went off to play football for steak well I mean <laughs> one lad actually got signed up for Port Vale oh nice, nice. so he, he did well went into the academy system and stuff so um, but yeah realistically I would love to do I'd love to do CrossFit Kids where we are at the minute yeah definitely uh, it's just the... like it's just insurance we have to is that the only to, barrier yeah we just have to sort that out and then hopefully we can start we can start bringing that into play a little bit great great it's about finding time for it as well yeah yeah Putting, putting something in the schedule. So how can people find you? On the website, CrossFit Tufnell Park. CrossFit Park. You can go on crossfit.com. You can search, it doesn't even have to be us. You can find CrossFit on crossfit.com. Yeah. There's an affiliate map. You can Perfect. put your address, you can put your postcode into the affiliate map and it will bring up the CrossFit gyms that are closest to you. Whenever I go on holiday, I'll look on the affiliate map, see what my closest gym is. And I've got this t-shirt collection at home of all the CrossFit gyms that I've been to around the world, New York and Arizona and many different places. Yeah. I've done a few. I've always been a bit tight and haven't bought the t-shirts. You should always buy I need the t-shirt. To, I know, I messed up. I you messed always up. get the t-shirt. I mean, most places, if you say you're a CrossFitter, they'll let you train for free if you buy a t-shirt. 
Yeah, do you know, if you I say I'll pay the t- I'll pay the twenty dollars for the T-shirt yeah, yeah. and I'll get the drop in. I'm not going to come back to them on holiday, but I want to get the T-shirt collection going. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because right, then you can go on. back into your home CrossFit gym and you've got this Rocking little trophy, this and you're like, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm more experienced than you because I've been to other CrossFit gyms. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I need to get on that. So yeah, get on get on CrossFit.com. If you're interested in doing CrossFit, I would say start with CrossFit.com and just yeah. have a look at the kind of stuff that they're doing on there. And it's not just like this is the workout, do the workout. It's not like this big cult. At the minute, CrossFit.com are uh, at war with Big Soda. I saw that. They're in court with Coca-Cola yeah, and Mountain Dew because they paid scientists to say that exercise could offset sugar, which it can't. If you take in massive quantities of sugar, you can't offset that with exercise. No way. But these scientists were paid by Big Soda to say, you can do that. Keep buying Coca-Cola. Keep drinking Coca-Cola because if you, even if you go to the gym, you're going to burn it off. But that's not, that's not true. Scientifically, the impact that it has on your insulin production and all the rest of it, the science of it is super detrimental that's to your crazy. body. crazy. Sugar and bad carbs are like the cornerstone of a bad diet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And they were saying, drink Coca-Cola, go to the gym, you'll be fine. And our Crazy. CrossFit are going, that's a lie. And you know it's a lie because they're currently losing. The, 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 the company that they paid, uh, the lawyers that Coca-Cola have paid have just refused to uh, carry on representing really? them. Really? Yeah. Didn't like American Heart Foundation also, like I think they supported some of this as well from yeah. there. Yeah, CrossFit are making waves now. It started off as something like we need to work out, but now because they've got such a massive influence globally, yeah, most countries have got a CrossFit gym. And it's about how do we, it's literally how do we move well for as long as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's not about just getting a workout anymore. It's about making people just better and healthier across a really broad range of time. They've got great um, info on CrossFit.com as well. Yeah. They publish a lot of the articles yes, and the science papers. It. The CrossFit journal is available to that's anybody. That's it. Yeah. I get the uh, email every, every day, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. You can sign up to the emails. You're probably not going to read them. But if you can go into the journal and just, t- you can literally type a keyword in. If your knees are hurting, you can literally go into the CrossFit Journal and type knees hurting. And there's probably a paper in there about how to improve function of your knees. Yeah. If you're interested in looking at how you should eat, go into CrossFit.com. There's probably papers on how to eat. I'm just getting ready to do my CrossFit Level 3. Nice. What does that involve? So it's a five-hour exam. So your CrossFit Level 1 is a weekend course. They go and teach you like the basic methodology, the compound movements, how to coach things safely and efficiently, and how to get people thinking about CrossFit. Uh, as a health choice the CrossFit level 2 you have to have like X amount of coaching hours as a level 1 and a little bit more experience you probably do it a couple of years after your level 1 as another weekend course that's just about coaching and programming how do I coach a group environment how do I make sure that I see everybody's faults how do I program efficiently across a broad range of time to make sure it's a rounded program so everybody gets something from it Yeah. The CrossFit level 3 is just an exam right okay they give you reading material there's like 300 articles they send you <laughs> Wow. Which, yeah, it's wild. They just send you a link, like, read all these. <laughs> and it's a written exam in the classroom? Um, mostly, no, no, it's like mul- mostly multiple choice. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. But you'll go, you'll sit in front, it's like a designated test centre. You sit in front of a screen, they ask you questions. There's some written works, so you'll be typing in answers. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some that are like, is it this, this, or this? There's some where they'll show you a video of somebody moving. Is this a good movement? Is it a bad movement? Blah, 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 blah. And I think currently there's four CrossFit Level 3s in London. Oh, is that it? Yeah. There's not many. Wow. Because it's a really difficult exam to pass. Because they don't tell you what you fail on either. Oh, so you can just keep reading it. Until it you, yeah, you okay. fail it, they just say, fail, come back and do it again. They don't tell you what you need to go and study. Ah. And the next time you do it, it'll be different questions. Have you done it before? No. No. I've just, um, I just had to do a CPR and defibrillator course. Oh, okay. I got that refreshed. That's part of the prerequisites for the level three. Oh, yeah. You've got to have yeah. defib and CPR. So at least there's one CPR qualified person within the gym. In the gym, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then once you've passed the level three, you have to either do it every two years or have so many CPD points. So oh, you're going okay. on and constantly trying to just keep up developing yourself. And stuff. Yeah, just live the life and keep pushing the message out that actually this is really good for people. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Awesome. I'll, I'll good luck, pass man. That later in the year. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, great to chat. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very me. much for coming in. It's been and wonderful. And if people want to find you, you're at Metcon Spud. Metcon Spud. Yeah, get yes. me on Instagram at Metcon Spud. There's some usually videos of you finishing a workout in a, <laughs> yeah, a sweat state at the end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit more fun the Instagram. People, people working out and doing some cool stuff. But yeah, Metcon cool. Spud. 
Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. See ya. Hey, folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.